Okay. Good evening, my friends. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, let's give this time of worship to the Lord as we begin with prayer. Insistent God, by night and by day, you summon your slumbering people. So we ask that you would stir us with your voice and enlighten our lives with your grace, that we would be able to give ourselves fully to you and to Christ's call, to his mission and to his ministry. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. So what songs can we be singing? What songs have been an encouragement for you? Five five seven. Five fifty seven. All right. My Jesus, I love thee. All right. Well, let's stand together. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine, for thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I loved thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love thee in life, I will love thee in death, and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath, and say when the death do lies cold on my brow. If ever I loved thee, my Jesus is now. In mansions of glory and endless delight, I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus is now. All right. Well, thank you for that wonderful suggestion. What else can we sing? Cohen? 460. So 460. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. 
Immortal, invisible, God only wise, enlightened, accessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, your great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, you rule day and night. Your justice like mountains, high soaring above, your clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. Life-giving creator of both great and small, of all life the maker, the true life of all. We blossom then wither like leaves on the tree, but you are forever who was and will be. We worship before you, great Father of light, while angels adore you, all veiling their sight. Our praises we render, O Father, to you, whom only the splendor of light hides from view. Okay, what else has been an encouragement to you? 5.42? The ends of all the earth shall hear. All right, sure I know this one. I'm trying to remember how this one starts. All kindreds of the earth shall own and worship him as God alone. All earth to him her homage brings, the Lord of hosts, the King of kings. His is the kingdom of the right. He rules the nations by his might. All earth to him her homage brings. The Lord of lords, the king of kings. All earth to him. Her homage brings the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Both rich and poor, both bond and free, shall worship him on bended knee. And children's children shall proclaim the glorious honor of his name. All earth to him her homage brings, the Lord of lords, the King of kings. The Lord's unfailing righteousness all generations shall confess. From age to age they shall be taught what wondrous works the Lord has wrought. All earth to him her homage brings the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. 
All right, thank you for those of you who helped get us started there. And uh, you guys can be seated. Okay. So tonight we are looking at Lord's Day 45. If you're using the Grace Altar hymnals, that is page 916 and 917. You'll see there's a few questions in regards to prayer. Uh, but before we take a moment to, to study God's Word using this study guide, let's, uh, let's take a moment to pray. Uh, Father, we do thank you for this gift of prayer that we have access to you. Uh, you, you would want to hear from us. Those, those of us, uh, you know, we are so small in comparison to you and to the universe that you have made. We're people born into sin, and yet you have worked things so that way we could know you and be known by you. So help deepen our commitment and our joy in prayer. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So I will read for us the questions, and then we can recite with the answers together, starting with question and answer 116. Why do Christians need to pray? Because prayer is the most important part of the thankfulness God requires of us. And also because God gives his grace and Holy Spirit only to those who pray continually and groan inwardly, asking God for these gifts and thanking him for them. How does God want us to pray so that he will listen to us? First, we must pray from the heart to no other than the one true God who has revealed himself in his word, asking for everything he has commanded us to ask for. Second, we must acknowledge our need and misery, hiding nothing, and humble ourselves in his majestic presence. Third, we must relock on his unshakable foundation. Even though we do not deserve it, God will surely listen to our prayer because Christ our Lord, this is what he promised in his word. What did God command us to pray for? everything we need spiritually and physically as embraced in the prayer Christ our Lord taught us and what is this prayer our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the glory and the glory forever. Amen. All right. So, if we were going to be discussing this Lord's Day with a friend, what, what scripture would we use? Because we want our conversations to be based on scripture, not just the, uh, the study guide. Sienna? All right, so you said the Matthew 6. Oh, yeah. Yep, oh, yeah. So you're looking at where we get the, the Lord's Prayer from. So Matthew 6, 9 through 13. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So that is a, a prayer that Jesus taught us. And it wasn't that long ago. I don't know, maybe it was a year ago at this point where we spent some time wa working through the, the Lord's Prayer. But yeah, it's nice that he, he gave us a real simple, concise tool that, that covers a lot. What else would you use if you're going to be teaching people about prayer? Uh, 
Now, Russ? Uh, Psalm 145, verse 3. Okay, Psalm 145. Not a lot of pages to go through. 145. There it is. So 145, verses 18 through 20. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. So what do you like about that passage? Well, he, he is near to us as, as our calling on him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's not some abstract force that's out there in the universe, but he is a personal God who is real. He is with us. And uh, when we, we cry out to him, he, he hears us and he rescues us. Which is good, because if you've heard me use that language of moralistic therapeutic deism, we've, as, as American Christians, we've kind of slipped into this belief that, well, God is real, but he's not actually going to be involved in your life unless something really big happens and you just pray, if you pray hard enough, then maybe he'll hear you. Well, no, 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 that's not the way the scripture describes it. So that was a, a good reminder of the nature of, of our God. What other scripture would you use if you're going to be sharing this Lord's Day with a friend? Any? Um, somewhere I learned that God's call mandate is Jeremiah 33.3. Jeremiah 33.3? I'm trying to remember. Was that one of the ones that was in here? Is this, uh, okay. Let me find Jeremiah 33.3. I was like, I don't remember reading that, that one this week. That's good. You get extra credit for that. All right. I'll just read the, the verses uh, before and after it as well. So, Jeremiah 33, while Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the, the, what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the houses in this city and the royal palaces of Judah that have been torn down and used against the siege ramps and the sword in the fight with the Babylonians. They will be filled with the, the dead bodies of the people. I will slay in my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from this city because of all of its wickedness. And so you're highlighting that verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So what do you, what do you appreciate about that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of scripture that talks about you know, the Lord hearing the, the cries of the, the people. You know, we saw that, and I, I think particularly of in uh, the book of, of Judges, as we saw the, the people turned their hearts away from the Lord, they got apathetic, and then, um, then things got bad, and then when things got bad, they, they cried out to the Lord, and then the Lord heard their, their cry and took compassion on them and, and sent someone to, to rescue them. Uh, but that's the, that is the, the nature of our God, and I'm glad that we've got a, a God who hears us. What else would you use if you're going to be teaching people about the, the importance of prayer? Oh, cat. Uh, Romans 8, 26 and 27. So Romans 8, 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And what do you appreciate about that passage? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that frustration of not, not always knowing what to, to pray for. Um, you know, sometimes I have that where it's the, you know, I, I don't know what God's will is, so I don't want to be presumptuous. So like, do, do I, you know, we're supposed to, to pray expectantly, but also not presumptuously. So like, 
how do I balance those, those things together? And so you're like, you know, and it doesn't, we don't have to be perfect in, in the way that, that we pray um, because the power of our prayer is not in our prayer itself, but that it is the Holy Spirit who, who comes and works on our behalf, that he intercedes for us, groaning with, with groans that words cannot express. And uh, that's, that's a comfort when, you know, I think all of us at some point go through a stage in our life of when we're learning to, to pray, especially if we're asked to, to pray in public of... Uh, uh, I, I don't know what to do. What if I'm not good enough with, with my praying? And that's a that good reminder of you know, the power of our prayer is, is not in, in us and our ability to, to speak. I remember uh, my first public prayer I gave when, when I was in, in high school. Um, and maybe I've done it in small groups, but I mean, like in a large group, I was the, that year I was the, our class chaplain, and so we had our, our class's chapel service who was supposed to lead, and, uh, and out, of, out of the blue, the, our class sponsor asked me to, to pray, and I wasn't expecting it, you know, which is you know, kind of unfortunate, you think if you're the class chaplain, you should kind of ex- expect to, to pray at some point, but um, I prayed whatever was on the top of my head, and I don't even remember what, I, what, what it was that I said, but afterwards, the class sponsor said, that wasn't a very good prayer. <laughs> Which it's like, <laughs> which you know, that you, you, it's not meant to be uh, casting her in a bad light, but just more of me trying to say that, uh, yeah, you know, I, this has become a normal part of what my job, what I do now. But you know, that that idea of, well, you know, how are we going to ever be able to find words that are going to adequately give God the glory that He needs? Well, we're never going to be able to find those words. But again. The power of our prayer is not in our words. The power of our prayer is in what the is in the Holy Spirit and His un- intercession for us. And so, yeah, or cat, like you mentioned, there are times where you don't even have any words, <laughs> but the, we don't need those because the Lord knows. Uh, what do you, What do you think about that? That you know, that a question that sometimes is asked of, if God knows everything we need, then why do we pray? What would you say about that? Well, I think it's it's sort of like that in the sense that they knew that they were going to get healed and they thank him. Yeah. So it's a a means of of thankfulness. And so we think of like with the the Psalm, see, Psalm 50, verses 14 through 15. Sacrifice, thank offerings to God, fulfill your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will honor me. And so. Um, there, were, there were, typically when we think of sacrifices in the Old Testament, we think of the animal sacrifices, but there were a few others, and one of those was that, that giving thanks and just the expressing our, our gratitude. Uh, Vince, I, did you have something else that you were going to add to that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we got a lot of examples of commandments to, to pray, and so, you know, if, if God didn't need us to pray, then why would he command us to, to do so? So, yeah, so there's part of that is just trusting. He, see, he sees a reason for that. He sees a, a value in that. Kat, did you have something? Yeah. 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 It's it's just a it's a presumption of this is part of what what we do. But then I think of First Thessalonians chapter five verses sixteen through eighteen. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we'll come back to that idea of what it means to pray continually. But you see, it just you know, it's it's not it's not a well, you know, maybe if you really need to for your sake. If you got something you have to get off your chest, then maybe you pray. No, no, no. You know, we are commanded to pray to do it joyfully, but to, to pray continually. And uh, one of the one of the things that passages that comes to mind, I forget the specific reference, but I know it's 
it's in the, the book of, of Revelation where um, it's talking about um, it's talking about the 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 worship that that is going to, to to be taking place, or it was the vision that John had of the worship that was was taking place as as he was in in the throne room of of God, and it and it talked about how there was incense that was being raised to to the Lord, and these were the prayers of of the people. That it, it is an act of worship when we we pray that, and and so that's one of the things you think of is like when we pray, it is it's not because it's not because God doesn't know what we need and we're informing Him. No, it's simply an act of worship. It gives glory to God when we pray to Him. And and Kat. Yeah. Yeah, it's how how can you really be depending on God if you're never looking to Him, never talking to, to Him, and that's a a good sign in our lives that if we're not praying, then we're we're depending on what we can do more so than what what God can do, and I'd I'd say that is that uh, that's a true statement at least when I think of in my own life of trying to figure out how to get myself out of some kind of trouble I got myself into, and then you know sometime way down the road realizing have I even prayed once about this yet and don't. Okay, you know, then maybe that's the reason why I'm in this trouble in the first place, because I haven't been trusting in the Lord. So, uh, well, so how, how does prayer become an act of worship? What, what about our prayer, what about our prayers give, give worship to God? Yeah, yeah, we're expressing our need for him. It's a, it's a humbling, and, and the, you know, like you're using the, the language from question and answer 117. Um, and that's where I, th- I think the three things that, that that question and answer lays out for us uh, kind of shows us w- why prayer is an act of, of worship. And so first, you know, if you're going to be praying to God, you're, you're going to be you know, recognizing that he is the, the true God. You know, if there's, you're not looking to some idol, you're not looking to something else, if you're praying to God, then, then that is a recognition that he is the one who is, is worthy of all our pleas and, and all of our, our cries. Um, second, and that's what you were bringing up, Russ, is uh, the fact that, that when we pray, it's a, it's a humbling act. Because why are we looking to God for help if we think that we've got things under control? So we're humbling ourselves when we pray to him. And then third... It's, it's an act of belief in God. It is a, a, an act of trust and faith. Because if we didn't think God was able or willing to help us, then we wouldn't cry out to him either. And so we see that, that when we pray, our prayers, in a, in a sense, are a form of repentance and, and belief. You know, we, we are unable to take care of ourselves, and that trust and belief that, that God is able to do so. Cohen, did you have something you were going to add? Yeah, so we're saying Colossians... Four was that verse two? Keep going back and forth over it. Ephesians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Okay, so four verse two. Yep. So devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for us in our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. 
so you see kind of a uh, shotgun of, of good advice there, but as we were bringing up that devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So I like that. That is a good one, kind of expressing that more of that, that attitude that, that we have. So, yeah, what do, what do you think it means there when it says to, to be watchful in our prayers? What, what kind of watching are we doing when we're praying? Uh, sorry, say it a little louder. Guarding yeah, guarding against temptation, so that, that watchful of, of the dangers that, that are in our hearts and in the world around us. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Um, and that, that would fit the, the context. Also wondering if, if the, the watchful could be watchful and in terms of an expectation of, of God's fulfillment of it is a, is a possibility as, as well. Yeah, that is good advice. For Say that again. Watchful for needs. Watchful for the, the needs of, of others, ways that we can be, be lifting other people up. Uh, uh, that's a good suggestion, too. I like that. Which I'm not sure, you know, just offhand looking at this, I'm not sure w- which uh, I think it, this one is referring to, but I would say all the things that were mentioned there are biblical concepts and, and a- good attitudes to have in prayers all right uh so one of the other things to that is a a good reminder of in terms of our theology when we're talking about prayer as an act of of worship Um, uh, have you guys ever heard of in in the way that we plan our worship services that that our singing is is considered an act of prayer to god i find that that's a helpful thing to, to remember because like when we, when we look at the you know the the things that that we 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 see like in in acts chapter two when it talks about the the things that that the the church was doing in those days we you know we see that they were praying but it doesn't say they were singing you know there are other places where it talks about singing as as a commandment um but but i've been been told by people and, and it makes sense to me that you know our singing is an is is an act of praying to God. And, and that's something I, I, I try to keep in mind that when I'm singing a song, uh, especially if you've got one where it's got a, a chorus that you know it re- repeats the phrase a certain number of times and thinking, well, I've said that, give me something new. And like if, if that particular thing that I'm saying at that time is not you know, intellectually stimulating, I use it as an opportunity to think of you know, like if I'm giving praise to God in, in what I'm singing, I try to think of what are, what are th- other things I can give praise to God for. If, if we're crying out to God, I think of what are, what are other things that, that I am confessing or I am lamenting of. And so it's, just, it's a helpful thing. Because I know some, some songs that we sing are just rich with one brand new idea right after another, and it is just jam-packed with new ideas. And then other ones... It, the song is going to take a little while and reflect on one theme throughout most of the, the song. And if you like that, that intellectual stimulation in that singing, that, that's a great thing to, to enjoy. But if you're singing a song that doesn't give that to you, well, it's a, it's a time of prayer. So think about what other things can you be praying based on what you're singing at the time. Russ? That makes me think about in the Revelation chapter 4. Yeah, Revelation chapter 4. Yeah. Day and night, they do never stop saying, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come." Yeah. Maybe putting it now for hundreds, thousands of years before eternity now. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Where uh, I, I do appreciate that, you know, we we try not to do too much repetition in our singing in the church, but you know, that's a good point that. You can't say that it is unscriptural to uh, to repeat a chorus more than once because, you know, in their worship, that's all they're doing. So not to say that this is uh, prescriptive, that that's how we should all worship, but, you know, it is descriptive. Tom, did I say that you had something to add? Yeah. 
Yeah, so we see that as, as an example of, of the, the prayers that, that they're offering. So you know, the people of prayer, if they're happy, some songs of, of praise. Um, and then I believe also kind of goes on to if, if someone is in, in need to go, go to the elders and they'll pray over you, anointing you with, with oil. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, and and the, then it also goes on to to de- describe uh, Elijah and was praying for the rain to stop, was praying for the the rain to to begin, and uh, and that that God, you know, he he answered those those prayers in those very powerful ways. Gary. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but Yeah, I would definitely agree with, with what you're you're saying. That you know, essentially, it's us talking to, to God, <laughs> and, and and that's something that we we can do throughout our, our moments of, of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think to do a, a word study on, on the word prayer. It's, it's one of those words that we use often enough that we don't really think to slow down and, and do that. But, yeah, I'd be curious to see you know, what the, what's in there. But, yeah, like you're saying, like, you know, the prayer, prayers are, are things that, you know, sometimes it's valuable for us to set time aside and really focus on, on prayer. And then, that, you know, there are other, other times that we, we kind of pray as, as we go, just, you know, off offering our, our words to, to God in, in simple, simple conversation. Yeah, and so that's, yeah, like with, uh, what do you have to, to add, Leroy? Yeah. 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 Music soothes a troubled soul. I've got a. You, you mentioned that, and that kind of makes me think of uh, what we've been reading in Samuel, and and how when Samuel was being tormented by an evil spirit, you know what what comforted him it was David coming and and playing his his instrument for him, which on one hand it seems. Like that's really strange, right there. Like that doesn't like it almost. It seems to make it seem like there's some sort of magical ritual in in the music there. But but then if we slow down and we think about the way that we sing, or or even in the way that we pre- play instruments as a form of worship, you know, it is a a prayer. And it would make more sense that if you know David wasn't just you know mindlessly plucking music for for Saul, but was prayerfully playing music for God and that in those prayers on, on Saul's behalf were effective in, in helping to soothe him. Because if David is someone who, who wrote many of the Psalms, he's someone who understands the mindfulness of music and, and prayer, would he not be? So, but, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I, 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 John, Johnny Cash has some very, very good stuff. That's all right. I, I derailed your train of thought, so I apologize for that. But if you remember later, you can you can bring it up. But 
Yeah, Gary, with, with what you were saying about you know the, the different ways that we pray sometimes very intentional and di directed in other ways, just kind of praying as we go. I think that helps to explain what we're talking about when, when Scripture calls us to pray continually. Because if the only way to pray is by setting our so time aside, then you, we're not going to be able to get anything done. You know, we're, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to get work done. We're going to starve to death because we're not eating any food. Like, it's just, you know, that, that can't be what it, it means. But if it's the idea of, of being aware that God is, is always with us and whether it be through our, our thoughts, whether it be through our spoken words, but to, to just realize that in everything that, that we're doing, we're doing it with God's presence and to share our moments of, of our lives and our, our concerns, our joys, to share it all with, with God is, uh, you know, that, that makes sense to me how that praying continually is possible. Yeah, Leroy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, David, just the, the example of prayers. And as you're saying, like, you know, you see it in his highs and in his lows because his highs were very high and his lows were, were very low. And yet we, and we see such a, a deep range of prayerful expression to God through the, the psalms that we see. And, uh, and that's, that is one of those things that we're trying to, to shape ourselves and to, to become more effective in our prayers. Where on one hand, it's grateful to know that we can stumble through our prayers and the Holy Spirit will still groan on our behalf, but you know, we can deepen our prayers by looking to the kind of examples that we have in the Psalms and other places. Debbie? Psalm 211? Yeah. Uh, let's see, was that? Yeah, Psalm 211. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you be destroyed in your way. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Yeah, so my, my guess is that um, this is, I'm trying to think of uh, the, the context of this, this psalm. Is there a specific part of that that, that you, you're looking for some answers to? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of king language in the in the Psalms where, you know, it it talks about the the representative of of God and that you know he works on on God's behalf and so like our submission to to the king that God anointed is is also an act of of worship and submission to the God who placed him there, which knowing that Jesus Christ ended up be, you know coming in the line of of David. You know, that, that he, he is the, the ultimate king. He is the ultimate representative. And so the Psalms of the kings of those days, you know, they had their partial fulfillment in those kings, but their ultimate fulfillment in Jesus. So that's just kind of a general way to, to read those Psalms. But, um, but yeah, so looking at Psalm 2, why do the nations conspire and the people's plot in vain? The, the kings of the earth rise up and, uh, let's see, am I reading the right one? Yeah. Uh, the, the kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break down their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in, in heaven laughs and the Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and he terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today I've become your father. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry and your way will lead, and your way will lead to your destruction for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. So yeah, so this is clearly a, 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 a royal psalm and, and like I was saying that... Um, that the, the kings in those days were the covenantal representatives there to, to serve on behalf of the people, you know, on the behalf of the people to God and the, on behalf of God to, to the people. Um, but then Jesus is that, that true and ultimate king. He's the true and ultimate fulfillment there. But 
you know, that language of, of kissing. They, they did a lot more kissing in, in that, that culture and in those days. That was just, you know, like you, you, know, you ever see like, you know, when, in some cultures when people greet each other that even the men kiss each other on, on the cheeks. This was one of those, those kind of, of cultures, but it was just a, you know, basically it's a sign of submission. He's telling the other rulers of the world, submit yourselves to the, the chosen king of God, lest you be destroyed. So I don't know, does that give a little more context there? It is a bit weird when like, like when we were, you know, in, in our reading of, of 1 Samuel and seeing that like when uh, Jonathan and, and, and David, you know, how it talks about the way that they loved each other so much and they would kiss each other. By our culture today, that sounds a bit strange to see, you know, love and kissing in, in that way, but that, that was just brotherly love. That's the, the kind of affection, that's what they, they did. And I know in a lot of Middle Eastern cultures, we think of, of Middle Eastern cultures even today as being very modest places, and yet that the, the men will still express affection to each other in that way, or even hold hands walking down the street, because in their culture, it is, it's not seen as a romantic thing, but it is seen as, as a form of brotherly uh, love or a type of, of friendship between each other. Um, so, yep. Okay. I'm trying to think. What else, what other questions might we have on prayer? So I'd just encourage you guys to, to find ways to, to pray, like Gary, you were bringing up before there's the intentional times of prayer, but then there's the, the prayers that we give throughout the, the, the day. Um, and in my discipleship group, um, Sterling had reminded me of uh, when we did the, the sweet hour of prayer, we were calling people to, to, to find some time in, in the week to set aside an hour to, to pray. And so that's a commitment he and I are making this week. But I'd encourage you to, to join us that you know this, this week find Find an hour that you can set aside specifically for prayer. Not that God only answers prayers if they're in an hour time chunk, but you know, if, if you don't really believe that, that God hears you and that God is capable of, of answering you, then why would you give away the to- an hour of your, your busy time to, to the Lord? And so it is a, it's, a good, it's a type of fasting our, our time for, for the Lord, but... Um, yeah, the, it is the Spirit of God that, that moves the, the church. It's by His power that you know, all, all good things happen. And so uh, let's, let's pray that, that God would, would move this church so we can help to, to move His Spirit in the community around us. Um, yeah, let's, let us end there for now. But you know you can always ask more, more questions later. Dear Heavenly Father, we... We, uh, we do pray to you, and, and we recognize that we fall so far short of, of that commandment to pray continually, but make us so in awe of your presence and your love for us that praying to you would not seem like a chore, that it would not seem like a sacrifice, but that it would be a delight for our weary souls. Father, build build us up in our ability to pray so we would be built up in our ability to worship you and give you the glory that you are due. Lord, we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So as we think of prayers and the ways that we can be lifting others up, um, Aura had let me know this morning of her grandson, Michael. Uh, he is in the hospital after a, a very big car accident. Uh, if I understood correctly, it sounds like there is one person in the accident who is dead, and there are four others in addition to, to Michael who are uh, very severely injured, with uh, Michael having hip damage, and uh, there's a blood clot that is discovered, and so um, it doesn't. And it doesn't sound like he is in the worst condition of, of those who who have survived. Uh, there's one of the the ladies in, involved. They. Uh, there was so much damage to her spine, it sounds like they had to put a, a rod into her spine to, to stabilize her. Um, so I don't know all the, the circumstances of, of the, the accident, um, but it's very clear that there is a need for God's providential hand of, of healing and mercy on them. 
and uh, pray that God would find a, a way to use a tragedy like this for his glory, because he's, God is he's always able to, to do so, but we, we want to, to pray for, for Michael or his grandson. Um, how else can we be praying for people? Debbie? Okay. And uh, do you know how many treatments she's had? Okay. And and how has she been responding to those generally? Well, at this point, we have Okay. Yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah, no, that is just that. Sounds like it's it's a very intense chemo because if it's able to to do that much to to the tumor itself, uh, then it's not surprising, and it's also taking a, a big toll on on her body. So. No, I would not imagine she would. Uh, but like I said, she's. She's in the hospital right now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, several concerns for your Aunt Linda. That is a hard time. Yes, yeah, that is a big... Yeah, that is a, a big prayer of praise that, that Deb is home. And uh, she gave me a, a, a brief call last night to, to let me know that she's home. And, and uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a big, big praise that she's there. I know she's she's happy to, to be in her her own house, and I wouldn't blame her. Uh, but that is just that realizing it's, it's going to take a while for her to, to build her her strength back up with the amount of time that she was in the bed there. But it, <coughs> it sounds like she's she's determined to to get that strength back, and and uh, that kind of attitude does make a big difference. Any? Yeah, so it sounds like she's dealing with, with some nausea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So pray for nausea she's been dealing with and for her appetite to return. Yeah, that's uh, you know, the food is important for, for building your strength, but if you've got no appetite, that's, I, I've had friends who've, gone through surgeries that for, for a while afterwards didn't want to eat and you almost have to force yourself to eat. That sounds like a difficult place to, to be. Kat? Yeah, so <clears throat> a lot of a lot of family trying to make travel plans and ask for you know prayers that 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 would be you know effective trying to manage all that. Are they trying to are they do you know as part of it them trying to get everyone together at the same time or is the issue more of trying to make sure it's all staggered? Yeah, I, I, I'd imagine that especially right now she doesn't need a house just packed full of of people, but having family there would still be a a comfort. Okay. Yeah, all right, so they are scheduling things out. Well, that's good that's happening. How else can we be praying for people? Yeah, Vince?
good. Well, good. So praise of the, the radiation treatment that she had after the, the surgery for her cancer, that the radiation went well. And uh, yeah, just prayers that, that they, they accomplishes what, they, what they're hoping to with that. And Debbie? Yeah. And, yeah, getting to spend some quality time with her sister over there in Iowa right now. So prayers for safety in the travels and time well spent. Other ways we can be lifting people up. Well, what's, uh, what's a way that we can be an encouragement to, to Aura? As I know, the, the news of, of her, her grandson injury has, has hit her uh, quite, quite hard. What's a way we could be a comfort for her? Yeah, so you'd be willing to send her a card? Well, thank you. And then, uh, and then you can continue to, to be praying for, for your Aunt Linda or something else in, in addition to that you think we could do. And then prayers, prayers are important. Yeah, we were just talking about, you know, God hears our prayers. Yeah. And then for, for Deb, you know, prayers of, of praise. And uh, yeah, I'm assuming they, they've got, with all the, the family that's, that's showing up, I'm sure that they have uh, people able to, to make meals or whatever, but um, just continue to pray for for them in her time of recovery and then uh and how about how about your, your friend kathy is there a way that we could be a, a blessing for her okay i appreciate that and then with uh with joyce as well you know she knows we're, we're praying for her but yeah just Lift her up to the to the Lord that God uses that time well. So let's let's offer these prayers now. Great Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for for hearing us. And thank you so much for for doing something of worth of of when we we look to you with our thoughts and with our words. And we pray particularly for Ora's grandson Michael after it sounds like like a very very tragic car accident with uh, a lot of injury and so we, we pray that you would would give healing to to those who who survive we pray for uh, a bodily healing um, we pray for protection from things like the, the the blood clot that was discovered in michael to keep him safe from from that potential danger but we pray that you would also use this for a form of spiritual healing that I don't know the, the spiritual conditions of all those who are involved, but um, sometimes you use physical tragedies to, to become a spiritual wake-up for us. And, and, if, and Father, we pray that it's your will that regardless of the stage of, of life that they're in, that uh, they would all be people who call out to you because when we call out to you, as we've read today, then we find our salvation in you. So, Father, um, give your blessing in, in this tragedy that they are going through. We pray for Debbie's Aunt Linda as she's going through some very harsh chemotherapy and, and uh, a, a fall yesterday and bleeding that they don't know the source of. Uh, there are, are many concerns, uh, but Father, we, we know that you have a hand of providence that is, that is able to, to protect her in all things. We're grateful for that providential hand we've seen through, through Deb her return home and so give her that that daily strength that that she needs and we pray particularly over the the nausea that she's been feeling help her to to build back that appetite and uh, help give give clarity and, and wise planning to all the people who want to to be there for her and and with her uh, let them make those decisions well we are grateful for for kathy's radiation treatments that she received 
we're happy to hear that those, those were successful. And as time goes on, we, we pray that she would not feel too much soreness and that the, the radiation accomplished what the, the doctors hoped to accomplish through that. We pray for, for Joyce and for Margaret as, as Margaret is, is in the, the terminal stages of, of her cancer. And we're, we're happy that, they, that she has enough health to, to make this trip out to, to Iowa and that she and Joyce could spend this time together. Let the season be one of, of joy and let it be one of good, rich fellowship and, and memories as they, they grieve a future that they know is coming. Uh, they don't know how many days or months or the time that Margaret has left, but Father, bless these opportunities that they have together. Father, it's also true for us, even if we're in good health right now, we don't know the days or the hours that we have left to this life, but let us use each moment well and for your glory. Let us be a people who are continually in prayer so we can see the, the power of your glory and mercy at work in our lives for, for our joy, for our, our community's redemption, for your honor, for your name's sake, Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Let us now stand together as we recite the unifying words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us say now together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended to hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, who ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above, you heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. My friends, hear this blessing from 1 Thessalonians that says, May the God of peace Himself sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go now together in this peace.